YouTube, Practical Shorter here coming at you with a video today all about the SIG P320, or as it is soon to be known, the M17 service pistol. I picked this one up a few weeks back in celebration of the adoption of the SIG 320 as the Army's new sidearm, as well as inauguration day for Trump 45. So this is how the pistol will, uh, or this is the accessories it'll come with. Um, you've got your obligatory lock, good in case you've got some kids around the house and no safe. does come with a chamber flag that is semi-useful in case you find yourself on a safety sally range. got an extra magazine, a semi-useful paddle holster, and a sample pack of Lucas Extreme Duty Gun Oil, which I believe is what was in there from the factory. It had a, uh, a tacky kind of oil on the outside, and then that, I believe that kind of milky white lube on the inside. Now this holster, uh, better than nothing, but I would recommend getting something else. It is kind of oversized for the compact, and uh, it's really not gonna do you any favors. But it is better than nothing. So here's the gun. I can tell you that the finish on the slide is very smooth, it's very nice, as well as the frame is also very smooth and very nice, but the texturing here on the grip panels is perfect. I like it. It's tacky, but not too tacky. Um, it doesn't tear up your hands, and as long as you've got a little bit of man strength, you're not going to have a problem with that at all. Something that I think you guys should be aware of is, uh, let me put this up next to a Glock 19, and I'll show you. 15 round mag, 15 round mag. But the SIG is taller can see that. The reason why, if we dig into it a little bit here, is take a look at how tall this piece of the SIG is compared to this piece of the Glock. You can see that the SIG frame above the trigger is much taller than the Glock frame. And the reason why is because the SIG has a chassis inside that's actually the serialized part, and they sort of had to make it that way to fit this underneath the slide. So, let's, uh, let's do a little disassembly here. Okay, I'm gonna be lazy. Use the mag to lock open the slide. Okay, and then we've got a little takedown lever here. Put some man on it, twist that around. And then no need to pull the trigger, this slides right off. That's, uh, that's a lot easier than some other guns on the market. And uh, I know the Army likes that for the safety sally aspect of not having to pull the trigger. Um, so once you've got the slide off, you've got your same takedown lever that you manipulated in order to get the slide off. Pulls out the side of the gun. Then um, you've got your front rails here. Just go ahead and lift. And then pull forward. And out it comes. This is the gun. This is not. Weird, right? So if you look at how tall this is, you can see where the extra height in the SIG 320 comes from. Now, uh, those of you out there who are buying SIG 320s, and those of you who are considering, I want you to see something. Go ahead and look in this channel where our takedown pin goes. No obstructions, right? Well, watch this. I'm going to play with the play with the slide lock here. Hey, I just made my life hard. That little doohickey will make putting this thing back together kind of weird. So you're going to have to uh you're going to have to lock that back before it'll really work for you. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. There's a little tail back here. This tail fits into a notch inside the frame. So you're going to put it down, push back, and then the whole thing drops into place. But we still have that little obstruction See that piece of metal? So, real easy fix. Okay, you've got a angled side to this. Okay. 
I'm going to put this in, and that angle matches the angle down inside. Okay, so I'm going to use that, turn, okay, cool. But it's going to be problems because as soon as I get past that, it's going to want to rock out of place. So take this, and I'm going to use it to lever back. I'm going to push that piece back like this. Listen for the click. Okay, and now we're good to go. Now this will go ahead and, and click. There we go. There's another little thing that I've picked up on that's kind of weird. Okay, let's say we're gonna cheat. Okay, we got our slide back on there, and all we're gonna do is pull it back, throw the lever. Should work, right? Let's find out. Pull back, throw the lever. Cool, we're reassembled. Dead trigger. What in the hell happened, right? Okay, I'm gonna manipulate the slide lock on the other side and listen for another click. Ta-da! Now we have a gun. Just a little weird thing I figured out and if you guys haven't figured it out that have 320s, you should know that. So if I helped out in any way, there it is. So now let's go ahead and talk about the SIG 320 versus some other guns on the market. Now, a while back, I had a video that I posted up about what I believe to be the Glock Killer, which was the FNS-9, okay? I talked about the FNS-9 um, because I was really blown away by it. It's a great gun really is it's totally underappreciated and very inexpensive for what it is and keep in mind FN those are the same people that make machine guns for the military it's good stuff but the 320 I believe can give the Glock a run for its money just as well and uh, I mean obviously the army thought so but um, let's talk about some of the key differences between what was the army looking for in particular that made the 320 a better decision over the trusty old Glock. Well, one of the things that the Army wanted was one gun that would sort of do everything for them. Um, and what they wanted for that was they wanted a manual safety that soldiers could manipulate because, you know, the Army doesn't trust their soldiers. So that's point number one. And uh, SIG satisfied that requirement by saying, okay, we'll make a thumb safety model. And they do have a thumb safety model 320. I'm just not a thumb safety guy, so I didn't get one. Two, they wanted um, the ability to mount optics and red dots. Now, we, for those of you who pay way too much attention to the gun world, you'll know that uh, Glock does make the MOS version now, which can fit a red dot. But then again, so does SIG, and SIG manufactures their own optics, so that was a selling point for the Army. All right, let's talk about something else. Um, the no, no trigger pull takedown, that was a big deal. Now, I say all of those things to say this. This isn't necessarily a better gun because it was picked by the Army. This isn't necessarily a bad gun because it wasn't picked by the Army. These are both good guns. There's a, uh, there was a difference in requirements, and that's why the, the SIG was picked. So let's talk about uh, something that Glock guys are gonna throw at SIG guys, bore access. They're gonna talk about how, oh man, the, the SIG is so much taller than the Glock. Oh, it's the end of the world. Look how much taller it is. <sighs> I took this little puppy shooting, and even with a compact size, I was able to completely control muzzle flip. So, I don't really find that to be the case. I know a lot of guys will try to say that, and you know, Glocks are real straightforward, straight back, but I think there's more to it than just how tall that is. If you've got some strength in your hands and you can actually hold the gun, it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, I don't foresee female shooters or weak gripped shooters having a problem with the 320 because of the taller bore access at all. Uh, it also has this beaver tail which helps transfer some of the of the recoil energy into the web of your hand which helps keep that down. Of course the Gen 4 Glocks 
can be equipped with a beaver tail like my 17 here's got so it'll do the same thing I would recommend anybody looking at getting a first time pistol to seriously consider the SIG and one of the big reasons why uh, is the trigger and I do believe the trigger on the SIG is better than on the Glock because if you take a look at the over travel there's hardly any and the reset is pretty I let that out too far I'll give you a real set okay I'll go as slow as I can here there there's the reset so the resets not bad compare it to a 19 watch the over travel okay so the 320 has less over travel and a quicker reset than a Glock now you can buy aftermarket triggers and all that but now you're talking about extra money with a Glock the extra over travel that you have is going to cause you to pitch shots not to say that the over travel that the SIG has won't cause you to pitch shots either but what I mean is that when you're holding onto a pistol and this goes for any pistol when you pull the trigger and it comes inside the energy that you had to pull the trigger can pull it towards your inside towards the open side of your grip with your trigger finger hand so if you're shooting right handed it'll pitch it left if you're shooting left handed it'll pitch it right and that's a very difficult thing to overcome you know that has a lot to do with your grip that has a lot to do with the dexterity in your fingers it's a myriad of issues and it takes a long time to solve and overcome with the 320 it's going to be a lot easier to overcome because it doesn't have as much over travel so for a new shooter picking it up the 320 will be a little more intuitive than the Glock not to say that the Glock is better or worse just out of the box as they are it's going to be a little easier to shoot the SIG but now let's do some simple math a Glock mag I can get a factory Glock mag on sale for about twenty twenty two dollars buying them in stores just you know go get it probably about thirty for being gouged thirty five okay the SIG magazine on the other hand if I'm lucky and I find this on sale it'll be into the high twenties usually thirty five bucks or so and if I'm being gouged forty five to fifty dollars that's a big difference but let's talk about the introductory cost a plain SIG 320 is going to cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of four hundred and seventy five to five hundred dollars a plain Glock is going to cost you about five hundred maybe five fifty um, so it kind of balances out the other thing that you have to consider is that the Glock comes with cheapo plastic sights and the SIG comes with some pretty good metal sights that have a decent shelf for, for uh, being able to work off of a belt or a holster. With all that said, I hope I've helped you guys make a good uh, choice and I hope I've given you all a little bit of information that you may not have already had. If nothing else, I gave you all a good look at this. So let's just finish out the video with a solid look. I'm going to do some more detailed videos later on for you guys about field stripping. Oh, well, I shouldn't say field stripping. I should say detailed stripping. But um, otherwise, the SIG 320, practical short recommends. Y'all stay classy. Bam, baby, bam, baby.